Hey guys, welcome back to the garden. Um, my garden is crazy and out of control. It has turned back and it has just turned into a jungle. So um, anyway, I'm going to try not to do a backflip in this chair. If you saw any of my, or one of my other videos, uh, I did a backflip on the video accidentally in the mud, turned completely a somersault over backwards. So. Anyway, the ground's pretty dry today, so I'm not going to hopefully do that. So, I'm going to share with you, you know, the good, the bad, and the ugly. And the fact is, is that I have had a lot of commitments um, outside of the garden, and so I'm itchy and hot and sweaty. I've been out here harvesting, as you saw. Um, but I've had a lot of commitments, like this last weekend, my sister and her husband asked us to go on a rock dig, and I've never done that. My husband and I went and we had a blast. But every time you're gone for just a few days, um, everything just gets out of hand. And it definitely is. And because it is, I'm gonna show you that because like I said, I wanna show you everything. I wanna show you what's real in life. It is not hurting my harvest any. Um, my husband harvested some okra. Uh, I harvested peppers. Now these are supposed to be a purple cayenne. Uh, cayennes are usually long and skinny and so I don't know what these are. I'm going to dry these and uh, make crushed purple pepper sort of things to use for winter because um, I like doing that. The okra I will go in and wash and slice and freeze uh, unless we eat it because there's just about a nice fat to eat. Tomatoes. Look at all the tomatoes. They are amazing. Um, this is one of those Italian tomatoes that I grew this year, and it's ruffledy. I call it ruffledy, but it's so pretty, and they taste so good, and they're beautiful when you cut them. Uh, I have quite a few of those. I have some big ones and some little ones, but anyway, I have another bowl of tomatoes. These I'm going to take in and wash them and I will take the center out in any bad spot and put an X in the bottom and then I will drop them all in freezer bags and put them in the freezer. When I'm ready to make salsa or canned tomatoes or chili or whatever I'm going to make, um, I pull these out of the freezer and the skins will just fall off and that makes it so easy and so handy um, So for using your tomatoes. Of course we will eat them, a few tomatoes. I'm going to have to make some bread so we can have tomato sandwiches. If you haven't checked out my bread recipe and my bread video, try that. Um, I'm going to make another one here real soon. We have beans. Um, this has been an unusual year for beans. I've got two pans of beans here. I've got another pan. I have two raised beds that are about 12 foot by 4 foot. Uh, one of them is. And the other is a smaller stock tank. You've seen it in my videos, but um, the double raised bed, this is its fourth picking, and the stock tank, it's its fifth picking. Usually, um, I get three pickings out of green beans and they are done, but I have watered these really well. I don't know what I attribute to this to, but they've still got flowers coming on. I mean, they're full of flowers, and the beans are nice. Um, I'm picking them young, so they snap easy. Uh, I've probably had about, I don't know, three or four beans total in my whole season that have had bug bites out of them, which is another unusual thing. But uh, we just always top our beds with compost or manure uh, so that the plant has a lot of nutrition. And so these I'm going to blanch. I have a video I showed you before. I'm going to blanch these and, well, we're going to snap them, wash them, blanch them, 
and put them in freezer bags. And when I can green beans, probably this weekend, because I've got a whole bunch of them in the freezer again, uh, it makes it so easy to do your green beans because you're just going to pack everything in your jars, your onion, your potatoes if you want. If you don't, just green beans, your seasonings, and um, they're ready to go. And that makes them so easy when your green beans are snapped and ready. Now, if I was to go in with these beans and think I was going to do a pressure canning session and have to snap these and wash them and all that stuff, the process would take me a lot longer. So, um, you know, and I like to start my canning of a morning because you get kind of tired uh, before you're finished. There's a couple of green beans in here, not many, but a couple that are bigger. And when I take these to my husband to snap, he will take these out and we'll save these for bean seeds. So if some get away from you and they're bigger, just save them for seed for next year because you'll need them. Um, this is a great time to start canning, uh, putting away food. If you've seen the grocery store prices, they're just absolutely out of control. And uh, we don't know what's going to go on, but it's always good to... And the farmer mar farmer's markets are open now, so if you didn't grow and you don't have beans growing in your garden, um, go to your farmer's market and get some and start your pressure canning that way. You don't have to grow it all. You can go purchase it and uh, from the farmer's market and get it put away for winter. But there's nothing more awesome than having a can, a jar of green beans and potatoes with onions that are all seasoned up on your shelf because they're really cooked just like if you buy a can of green beans from the store and they're ready to go. Um, okay, so you're looking down my rows of tomatoes and those actually aren't out of hand. My husband had spent a lot of time tying them up and keeping them neat. And those are actually in really good shape, easy to walk through, easy to harvest. I broadcasted zinnias, and I have beautiful, amazing butterflies um, and bees and stuff. And, you know, they've done what I wanted them to do. They've attracted a lot of pollinators, but, you know, I've kind of let them grow up in my pathway. So, all right, I'm going to show you the jungle. And this week I'm going to come out and try to get a handle on it. I'm hearing... I have a little family of wrens around here. I think they like my sunflowers. And the sunflowers that you see in my garden all over the place, actually, when they have the heads come on, I just cut the head off and um, set it on the ground for the squirrels and birds, and they just plant them for me. So all of my sunflowers are volunteer. I haven't uh, planted not one single one this year. I thought I might not have any, but lo and behold, I did. So, all right, I'm going to show you this garden. Um, if you haven't ever gardened and you want to learn to garden, I'm going to put a link below. Um, I do give classes on gardening, and uh, come join us. There's a bunch of like-minded people. We all talk about gardening and um, problems and successes, and uh, I'll show you from beginning to end in my videos how, how to start and how to garden. And you can do it on any scale if you have pots on your porch or if you have an in-ground garden or if you want to stick to raised beds because they're easier to pick. I mean, there's so many choices with gardens. There's the green stalks. I had a, I made one uh, right, it's right behind my camera here, but um, I have a video on it that I actually got these from the Dollar, Dollar Tree and they were $1.25 a piece and I put a tea post in the ground, but I have a video on that you can look at. And you can grow things in there. Mine's full of flowers. Um, well, I got a couple of strawberry plants, but uh, I have green ones that I'm going to do a beanstalk, but I just haven't gotten to it. So, uh, anyway, I'm going to show you the jungle now. So, if yours has turned into a jungle, don't worry about it. It always gets out of hand. The biggest thing I have a problem with uh, is nut grass. So, it comes up and it's very easy to pull because of the way that we garden and we don't till and our soil is soft like coffee grounds so they just pull out easy. But I still have to pull them out and I haven't done that. So I'm going to work on that early in the morning. But for now, I'm going to show you the jungle. Follow me. So when I told you I had a jungle, I was not kidding. Here's one of my many self-sowing sunflowers. There's a littler guy next to him. Down here I have beets. Um, and they are huge. Well, some of them are huge. 
see if we can find one down here. Oh, there's one. It's time for me to do pickled beets. Can you see them down there? Oh, there. I got the camera on him. So, we're going to do some pickled beets. Um, my okra is over here, and you can see that I'm going to have to get the grass out of that. I've got grass between the uh, here and the okra over there, but that is okra. And then my flowers are behind. The cucumbers, they're doing good. I've got a few little cucumbers in there. They're starting to get a little bit yellow, but cucumbers do take a lot of water, so just... Uh, and there's some that got too big that we'll save for seed. The corn, we planted corn later on and it is doing great. It's growing really fast and quick. And next to it we have tomatoes. We have several rows of tomatoes here. That's where you saw me picking earlier. These are all tomatoes and they're multiple kinds. And there is another sunflower that grew all by itself or with the help of a squirrel. We have some onions out there. You can't really tell that that's onions, but that is onions. And some cherry tomatoes down here on this little fence. We have started putting beans anywhere and everywhere because I usually tear out the ones, you know, after the third picking. But since they're still providing beans, we're not going to do that. We're going to go ahead and just start planting beans other places. These are tomatillas. Um, they make a wonderful green sauce. It's my husband's favorite sauce. So we have those coming on and because he put them up on the fence like that they're going to be really easy to pick. If you don't put them up on the fence they're going to do like a tomato and just crawl all over the ground. It makes easy uh, it easy for your fruit to rot and it's harder to find them and pick them. But this year they will be easy to pick. This is one of the bean beds that I picked. This is the one that is on its, well I just picked its fourth picking. And of course I've mixed zinnias everywhere. These are the queen lime reds and they're so pretty. I don't know if you've ever grown those. Um, I'm thinking about selling some zinnia seeds this year. I have some pretty gourmet flavors of them. And uh, I might just do a mix if anybody's interested. So I'll get back with you more on that later. Okay, my tomatoes, my raised beds, my three. There's another sunflower. Um, oh, and here's my indigo chocolate tomatoes. I haven't even picked those. See them down there? Those are amazing. Hopefully I'm not moving too fast to make you sick. Okay, these are Chinese noodle beans. Aren't these awesome? Um, some of them I've let get too big, some of them are not. They make great pickled dilly beans, but they're kind of a novelty to grow on your fence. Um, if I were to grow flowers or these, had a choice, I would grow these. They hang down and they look really pretty on the arbor. So, um, you can see you can't even walk through my arbor because it's so grown up. I have a marshmallow plant I'm going to trim back, um, and it's kind of crazy right now, but... My zinnias, I said I wasn't going to let them grow up in the path this year, but I did. So, anyway, it's hard for me to pull something out once it's growing. This is a calendula that I'm going to pick and uh, make some skin creams out of. I have quite a few calendula. I have more tomatoes that need picked down here. I have a white sage I started this year. Um, I bought some one time at Natural Grocers and it was the most awesome tasting sage. I used it in a turkey and I don't know, I just liked it better than other sage. So uh, I have a nice plant of it growing there. I just started that this year. And here are the little peppers that you saw me picking earlier. if I can get down there with them without making you sick. 
There's some peppers down there. They're purple. They're really pretty. I got quite a few of those, so last year I didn't have enough hot peppers to crush, so this is my zinnia field. I'm going to call it a field because that's what it is. Oh my goodness, I just now noticed. Look up here. See those plants that are up high? Those are the Mexican sunflowers. I didn't even know that they come up. I thought that was a weed and it wasn't. Those are Mexican sunflowers and they are bright and orange and beautiful. Let me see if I can get in on them. I can't even get in there. Look at that. Those are amazing. So I broadcast zinnia seeds. I had so many. So anyway, if you decide that you want to purchase some zinnia seeds, I'm going to do a mix of these and uh, probably sell them. But boy, they're attracting birds as well. So as you can see, my garden has turned into a jungle. I love it. I love being out here. I love the sound of nature. I love the locusts in the trees, the cicadas. I love the birds, the butterflies, everything that it attracts. So if you end up having a jungle and that wasn't what you planned on, look at the positive side and uh, look at what all it's attracting into your garden because it's actually very beautiful. So I am hot and sweaty, sun's going down, and I'm going to go inside and process this stuff. So thanks for joining me. Don't forget to um, like, subscribe, and share if my video was helpful. If you want to learn how to garden, want tips, tricks, how I do it, um, and there's not just one way, there's multiple ways, but if you just want some encouragement, um, and to learn some of the ways that I do things. Join my garden club. I'll put the link in the bottom. Thanks for joining me.